Hey guys, Gary from DIY Electronics. Today what I got for you is I'm going to go over everybody, well not everybody, a lot of people ask what is the yellow, green, red, black little cord that comes with their crappy yellow, yellow board. All right, I send it along just in case you got you're a programmer okay this cord is not for your run-of-the-mill day trader let's say this is for the more in-depth programmer that wants a little bit more control of the board okay um, these guys know how to use VS code or they know how to use uh, plat platform IO so on and so forth but for a majority of you guys, um, if you don't know what that cord is, basically you can just throw it out if you want to, okay? Or hang on to it. Maybe in the future you'll get into coding and stuff like that. But this cord is called, okay, it's a UART cable, okay? And for you guys to use it, you actually have to have a UART, a USB converter. And I'm just going to just touch briefly on what this is all about. All right, I'm going to use the UART to get this thing up and running on the pool, okay? I am not going to be using putty, okay, to actually um, get this programmed onto the pool because the Nerd Miner version 2 and also NM Miner doesn't have the proper fork in it for UART control, okay? Now, I know that went over a lot of your guys' heads, but you guys out there that use VS Code and Platform I.O. and possibly a little bit of Arduino know what a fork is in your uh, in the file system, okay? Now, again, most of the Nerd Miner version 2 and NM Miner do not have a fork for UART control. Not, not saying that you can't put in a fork yourself. You can go in there and set up UART control. Um, I, I, I don't do it because there's really no reason for me to do it because all the files are there. Everything is there. Everything's, I mean, you can go into VS Code and change it and stuff like that. Um, there are some advantages of UART, but I'm not going to go into that. I just basically want to tell you guys what this cord is all about. All right. So now I'm going to bring you out on the internet real quick and just give you a synopsis, as you will. Um, of what UART is. It's a universal asynchronous receive transmitter. Okay? It's basically a programmer cord. Alright? Just like just like the USB cord is where you got it plugged in, okay, you're programming, you're you're uploading your pool information and so on and so forth. Um, that is what the universal asynchronous receiver transmitter will also do if this software was set up for it. Again, uh, Nerd Miner version 2 and NM Miner do not have the proper fork for UART control. Okay, if it did, it'd be kind of fun, but uh, it's really not necessary because it's it's really cut and dry just using it over the C connector. Now, what I got right now is I'm going to come back real quick. Um, here and here. I've got this Nerd Miner. Okay, and it's all it's ready for um, me to manipulate it and put it on a pool. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a side by side comparison. I'm going to put this on the pool. I'm going to put it on uh, publicpool.io. Okay, but I'm going to have a side by side comparison of putty and what I'm doing on setting it up on the pool. All right. So what I have to do is right on the back by the by the card that is your UART control right there that is where the cord plugs into then you plug the UART to USB control into your computer all right and now you are running over UART so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect all right I'm going to take and plug my UART cable I'm just going to plug it in, then I'll show you. All right. I got it plugged into the back of the board. There's my, my converter. All right. Now, guys, the, the cord isn't long enough, so 
you're not going to be able to see this. I'm going to plug it in down here, and then we're going to get this thing up and running. All right, go. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. So my computer's seen it. So now let's go out on the internet. Well, not the internet. Yeah, the yeah, internet, basically. Let's go down here. All right. So it found it. Okay. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go 192.168.4.1. Okay. So here it is. Here is the NerdMiner um, access point. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Putty right next to it. Uh, putty. And how you Putty in is you go down here. You go to Device Manager. All right. We're on COM4. Now I'm doing this kind of fast, guys, because... You really won't ever use this. This is for the guys that want to manipulate this a little bit further if they want to put in their own fork uh, for UART control. All right, so we're on COM4. That is what our package is on. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go into serial. I'm going to go into it. All right. 115200. Now, the best way to get into these guys, go over here to terminal, um, put, on, put on your explicit, the uh, CRLF, and then force your local echo. And that way it will bring up a command prompt so that you can type into the, the uh, command. So I'll open it. Wait for it to sync up. Okay, it synced up. I'm going to click on it, see if I can input. I can input, all right? But since this does not have UART control, I can't do it anyway. So I'm going to come over here. Um, I'm actually going to bring this over here. I'm going to bring my manager up. I'm going to say config. You guys can watch the two while I'm working it. Uh, next, gen gizmo. I am going to put in my um, app. And as I put the information in, you guys can see it. Well, it, it, it's kind of slow. One, two, three, four. Uh, the pool password, I'm going to leave it at X. And then I'm going to bring and put my... Uh, that is my um, Bitcoin address. And I'll say next gen. Um, gen. I'll go one. And then I'm just going to go down here and hit save. All right, should save, connecting to Wi-Fi. Um, the new access point is Next Gen Gizmo. It's connecting to the pool. All right, we don't need this over here anymore. That's going to go away. So I'm going to bring this up full so you guys watch this hook onto the pool. Okay, now it is hooked onto the pool and it is mining. All right, matter of fact, let me bring this over. And I am going to go to uh, web public. Did it show up yet? Yep, there it is right there. Web public. I'm going to bring up publicpool.io. Go down here. I'm going to put in my um, my Bitcoin address. I'm going to say workers. And there it is. Next gen right there. And that is over here. This is next gen working. Um, hash rate is at 347. So it, it, the pool is going to take a while for it to, to ramp up. This guy, this guy right here, that's not even mine. Somebody else is mining on my, um, my Bitcoin address. I, I wish I could try to get a hold of this guy to tell him, hey, take that miner off of my freaking, um, my uh, my address all right so 349 349 um this this over here you can watch see how your miner is working make sure it is hashing make sure it is on the pool so that's yeah, a couple of things you can you you know do with uart all right so let's refresh this over here so we're at 377, right over here, we're at 348. All right, so my actual um, hash rate, right from UART control, 
is about 350 but the pool thinks I'm running at 377 now guys just to let you know this is one of the ways that the NM miner spoofs the pool to thinking that it's actually you know mining higher I, I won't even get into that pool data okay it just gives you all kinds of information about the pool make sure that you're mining properly gives you your your actual um, kelly hashes it'll show you accepted shares show you your difficulty all right down here it says difficulty is 0 0.1 your actual difficulty is uh, 0 0.003 0 0.001 it, it it fluctuates All right, let's give this another refresh. All right, see, it, 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 I told you up here, the difficulty was 0, 0, 0.1 and it went to 1.3 and it, here it is. He reflected it right here. All right, so my actual hash rate is 349 and the pool is thinking that it's 541. Okay, we got some errors here. Difficulty too low. Refuse submission 42. So that is a rejected share. It takes a while for these to ramp up and actually get on to mining properly on the pool. I'll let you guys watch that for a second. So we're at 350 for that's this is what the actual UR is pushing out where we're on average of 350 let me see what yeah even the even the front screen of the miners is seeing right now it's uh, 349 oh and it's 349 here that's exactly what my screen is showing and this is a nice thing here too guys it'll tell you what license that you're mining on all right uh, pull, pull API, okay, that's the API call, um, and that is my license. So this is a good way to, you can find out if you're actually mining on your license. All right, I'm going to come back, talk my way out. All right, guys, that is what is called um, UART control, and that's universal asynchronous uh, transmit and receive. And again, that's not for you, just your you day traders out there that are just, you know, popping this thing up on your wall and, you know, and it's all pretty and blue lights flashing and everything else. Um, this UR control is for you guys that are using the VS Code, Platform IO, Arduino, so on and so forth to manipulate, okay, um, the um, actual firmware in there, okay? And again, both. The NM Miner and Nerd Miner Versa 2 do not have forks for UR control. You're going to have to go into, um, actually, I, I use a, a thing called Phony. It's a Python uh, emulator. Works pretty nice. And I go in there and I change some things around too. It works pretty cool. But anyways, VS Code, Platform IO, you guys can go in there, put your own fork in for UR control, so on and so forth, and what have you. Uh, like subscribe uh, give me a handshake buy me a coffee so um, again most of you guys can take that that uh, pretty little cord and just throw it away um, unless at some point you want to use UART control and if you do you're gonna have to get a UART to USB converter alright a lot of you guys, Arduino guys out there have UART to um, UART to <sighs> USB because that was the way that the original Arduinos were um, program was through UART. That's back when you got the chip and just built it. Okay. Matter of fact, watch. I, I, I believe I got a couple of Atmel chips back here. Yeah, guys. I just got these out of my drawer. Those are uh, at Mega 328s. Oops. Oh, 329, sorry. So, if any of you guys are interested, I've got 
a lot of all that mega chips. Um, and if I look around, I actually have the 16 megahertz uh, crystals for building your Arno, your own Arduino on a board. I actually have a uh, YouTube video out there on how to build a Arduino on a breadboard. So if any of you guys are in, interested in an app mega chip, um, let me down below. We'll hook up and I'll get you a chip. All right, guys. See you on the next one.